One, two, three, go. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ray. We are coming to you from Stratford, Connecticut, where we live with our dog, Tarquin. This is our little knitting YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, yarn dyeing, crocheting, and all the goodness that happens with that. So, and this is episode... Does anybody know? Seven? Um, 47 episode 47 and today is saturday october 2nd and it is can you believe it's october 11 a.m it is happy 11 a.m well we're pretty we've been pretty productive i've gotten into workout we went and got a haircut tarquin's gone for a walk and now we're back here chatting with you all yeah so pull up a chair make some coffee or tea or uh, alcoholic beverage depending on the time you are we're not a little early for us well for us not really you have brunch Mm. Yeah, true. You could have a mimosas. Totally. Um, With just a splash of orange juice. You don't need a lot of orange yeah. juice. Yeah. So, welcome um, back Strawberry to all of our... Strawberry champagne and orange juice would be delicious. Oh, that'd be good, right? Mm. Welcome back to all of our returning viewers and any new viewers. Thanks so much for checking us out. Yeah. If you haven't already, um, hit that subscribe button. Give a thumbs up or a down. Leave a comment. Like. Ring do all the fun. Bell. Do all that fun YouTube goodness. Yeah. Totally. So, it has been a fortnight. Sure has. And I have not... We have not much to, sh- to talk I feel about. Like I, do, I didn't do much knitting. I've only knit on one thing, mm-hmm. and it's still not done. So, But you ran into a little hiccup. Yeah, so we'll talk about that later, the hiccup. Yeah. And the resolution to the hiccup. Which was great. Um. So, let's talk about our last two weeks. All right. What have we done? Um, Nothing. Not much. No, we haven't. We feel... We were just like talking about that before. Um, don't know that we've seen people. Well, you went out for dinner. I did. It was really nice. My um, my boss took us all the managers out for a nice Italian dinner. It was at a a really nice restaurant that I had never been at before. It was delicious food. I'm all about the food right now because I'm pretty hungry. I almost spelled it because Tarquin gets nervous when we say the word hungry. Not nervous. He gets excited like he's gonna eat. Oh, you know. <clears throat> I thought you meant the word food. I'm like, I don't know that he knows food. No, H U N G R Y. We said, yeah. yeah. Um. So it was really, it was really <laughs> Wait, nice. What did I spell to him? Remember, like <laughs> a couple oh, days ago, like him and I was talking to the him. B A G. And oh yeah, you so B A G. <laughs> We're so. This is bad. We shouldn't no, be admitting these. If things. you are a dog owner, if you are a pet owner, and the pet understands what you say, yeah, you know. That you spell out some words. Of course. Right? Like we used to, when we lived in the apartment, we used to take talk, uh, Tarquin to a dog park. So instead of calling it that, we were like, oh, do you want to take him to the DP? Right. So he didn't know. And it becomes uh, part of our everyday language. So even when we're talking to each other, we still say DP. Right. Yeah. Um. So Tarquin. Even when he's not around. Which is exactly. So um, but so Tarquin has a bag that you got him last year for christmas like and it scrunches up and every night him and i it's like a hide a treat bag to make yes, them like yeah. think and work hard for their treats so i break up some like a big milk bone and i put it in there mm-hmm. and every night i a- ask him if he wants his bag so i don't know why this one night earlier in the week i asked him i was like hey do you want your bag right and i'm going inside to get it and i was like wait did you just, Did you just spell, spell that? that for him? And I didn't even pick up on it because we're it's I'm so used to us spelling these things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So continue with your dinner. No, well, that was it. So it was it was a nice dinner. Um, I had a, a new beer to me. Uh, it was like an Italian beer. I can't remember. Poloni, I think is the name of it, or Peroni or something like that. It was really good. It was nice and light. It was nice. And then one of the managers, um, because I liked it so much, he ended up um, giving me a six pack yesterday, which I left at work. Unfortunately, it would have been nice to have today. Hmm. Very nice. But that's okay. Yeah, so I did that. Work has been really, really um, busy. A lot of late nights at work this past two weeks. And school is, uh, this semester, this class is ending. I do seven-week courses. Um, so this this course is ending. I have like two more assignments. I have to finish a paper tonight. Uh, and then I think that's really it. My yeah. knitting has been monogamous. And then I finished something glorious. You finished a couple projects. I, I did. I have two FOs today. But I moved on once I once I finished a, a larger project. Um, and yeah, I haven't done much. I've worked. Yeah. 
work there are a couple late nights an early morning um i've done a bunch of dyeing i was so, gonna say oh, you did a lot of yarn dyeing. i did a lot of yarn dyeing yeah i did some knitting um i got a new video game that uh, a couple days ago that i started playing called new world which i've been enjoying so i can't wait to get to that today mm-hmm. um and enjoy that and oh we decorated for fall fall yes. has fallen in our home yes we've pulled out all the fall did decorations that. and yep. did that last weekend last weekend was that and like yard work yep and house stuff just house yeah. stuff mm-hmm. um yeah so that's kind of been our two weeks yeah the weather's been um beautiful yeah although one night i was like blah, 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 blah. so dramatic we have today to he says oh we we need to move to florida yeah we'll retire so, no. really early like in the next year or two not happening <laughs> um nope and then I think that's everything. So we'll jump into ad mini stuff. So tomorrow we will have an Etsy shop update. Tomorrow's October 4th. Oh, that's my parents' no. anniversary. Is it? No, no tomorrow's, tomorrow's October, October 3rd, 3rd. But October 4th is my parents' anniversary. How many years? 20. 21. One? No. How old am I? They're, they'll be 40. You, it's I'm 40. You're 40? 40. 41. 41 years. Wow. No. 40. No, forty-one. I don't freaking know. I think it's forty-one. Did they get married before or after? My you mom were born? was nineteen when she got when they got married. I'm not gonna. Oh, I can't. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, but we. Everybody knows that she just turned a number. A number. Was mom? She, I'm so sorry. My mom watched. Were they this. married before you were born? Yes, Kevin. Okay, so if you're forty, then it would have to at least be forty-one. It's forty-one. Okay. There yeah, we go. So, so happy we figured that Me out. Me too. Happy forty-first anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say forty-one. Happy forty-one. Um. So yeah, we'll do a shop update tomorrow, October third. It's gonna be at three p.m. Eastern time. Yes. There'll be some yarn and some of our new pins. pins. So they're just a little bit larger than the last batch, and we have the original white and teal, and then we have a black and teal. Right. So we'll have those up tomorrow. Um, and then we have our accessories knit along going do. on that started September 1st. It will run to the end of November. And that... I love, um, scrolling through Instagram and seeing people posting those things. I know. I so we have a hashtag. It's NATR fall 21 hashtag NATR fall 21. And then we're considering mm-hmm. accessories like hats, mitts, socks. Yep. I think scarves, cowls, headbands bags jewelry kind of what we did is anything that falls in the accessories category category in ravelry is Mm -hmm. an accessory right so this way kind of sell us on an accessory don't knit a sweater and tell me that that's definitely not an accessory yeah i mean if you knit a sweater during this knit along good for you but yeah um anywho think and then lastly uh so we have a bunch of coupon codes and last time we felt like it took a bunch of time so what we're going to do today is we're going to mention now. Guys, we have coupon codes. They're right down below in the description. Hit the little chevron and it'll expand it and I'll have them all. But then when we get to our acquisitions, we'll talk about them a little bit more. Yeah. So that is, I that's think, really all our, that. Yeah, that's really kind of what we've been really yeah, up to. I feel um, like it's been, oh, wait, before we get going, guess what's in two weeks from today? Guess where we'll be, guys? We I'm so excited. Where are we going to be? We're going to be in Rhinebeck. We are. We're going to go to Rhinebeck. We're going to go weeks. to New York Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck, New York. Is that bananas that it's in two weeks? Yeah, I'm. I'm like, I, I have, I'm afraid to get super excited because like I'm afraid that it's going to get canceled. I don't minute. think so. But I, I, so far it's on, and they're like all the vendors are listed. Um, I think we're good. I think I know. we're good. I think we're going. People have reached out to us already saying that they're <laughs> going. Um, we're going to go on Saturday. Yes. This is going to be our last podcast before. Right. Yes. We're going to podcast tentatively the day after. So that's so Sunday. That Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll podcast. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited. I'm excited to see people, you know, like mm. just to like meet people. We've, we've chatted with a bunch of you through, you know, Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. And it, all of this. It would be really cool to like meet in person so, and say hello. It will be our first fiber event that we've gone to since starting this. Like we've gone and we did the knit in the park in New Haven. Yeah, that was fun. We've done the worldwide knit in public day. Um, but we've never been to a fiber event since starting this. So that's gonna be that's yeah. gonna be a lot of fun. And, and I've never, never been, been as a knitter. Right. The only fiber festival that we've gone to was in Vernon, Connecticut, 
Yeah. Three or four years ago now, and you weren't no, knitting, I, and you def. I mean, even then, you were barely crocheting. Right. So I was convinced though that I was going to become a um, a drop spinner spinner. <clears throat> yes, you are. We that, we got drop spindles. We, we did. thought it was the coolest friggin' thing. That's when like my that, purchase of yarn <laughs> would bother you that I was spending money that because I didn't understand it. I'm like now, I don't understand why are you spending twenty eight dollars on this? That's what the of yarn. Beautiful like, what thing is, is now it. You got it from um, dirty. Dirty Water Dye Works. Yeah, Remember, that was wa- the first, one the of the first. Yarn, actually, the project is over there. Yeah. Super fun. Yes, that's one of the, I want to say that's probably one of the mm-hmm. first, we'll say, indie dye yarns that I bought. Because prior to that, all of my yarn purchasing would have happened at most likely Knit New Haven and Knit Picks. Right. Um, right. For the most part, I think. So, yeah. So, so if you go, please. Um, say hi. Please say hi. We'll be there. Wave at us. Yell at us. Cat call. Nine inch circular needle at us. <laughs> that would yeah, be funny. It'll be exciting to see people. People, who knows? Are we, you bringing we, what? Am I a bringing project? It? Yes, I am. Are you bringing socks? No, I'm going to do a sock head. Because socks, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that I might finish like a leg or something like that while I'm on it. Like I don't want to like worry about having to turn a heel or any of that stuff. So I think I'm just going to do a sock head or I might do the, the muscle berg. I'm really getting pulled uh, in that direction. Not me. I, know. I don't have everybody's a desire. knitting it, and I, I'm like, okay. I don't have FOMO with the Musselberg. I, I totally have FOMO. There is a very similar pattern, styled pattern, in the Moon and Turtle book that I showed last week yeah. that I want to knit because it's, I mean, it's it's the I would say that it's knit the same way. It probably just has a different um, increase and decrease for the mm-hmm. crown and a nipple. I think. <laughs> You're gonna do the nipple hats. It <laughs> well, does have, but you can you can go nipple free. It has a nipple or a pom pom oh. on it, pretty much. All right, sans needle. So I nipple. think. Oh, and then one more thing. Crap. What is it? Oh, and then next weekend starts the Stephen West M Cow. Oh my gosh, I'm so which I still haven't picked out yarn for, and I'm now leaning towards unless I make a decision today. Mm-hmm. I don't know what colors I want. But unless I make the decision today, I'm going to wait and buy my yarn at Rhinebeck. So then it would be my Rhinebeck, Stephen West, Shaw. and Cal Shaw. Great. I think you could. Um, you should. I mean, his... That, that might be. I don't know. Yeah. I, his motto is like, something don't stress. Right? With this knit along. Yeah, I just don't know what... Um, I still haven't decided on a color palette. I feel like I need to see them together. Mm-hmm. I have like 10 colors in mind. Which means we're going to be spending like hours at one booth or a booths. Maybe. For Who you knows? to pick out colors. Well, I'm also buying a sweater's quantity of yarn at Rhinebeck. So. What am I? Come on. You have your own ATM card. <laughs> Go make a purchase. It's the same account. Kevin, Kevin makes us split. I do. Because Guys. he's so embarrassed. <laughs> no, sometimes. it's not because I'm embarrassed. It's because you're embarrassed. It's not because I'm embarrassed. Because when you see. <laughs> One amount. If you see, you don't the want amount. to see the large amount. Correct. If you see it separately, it makes it a little easier to what, digest. What did you make us split up that time? Our suits. Oh my god, that's right. <laughs> so we're at Macy's. We, t- I mean, we talked about getting our suits, and uh, we posted pictures of us like wearing them and stuff. But when it came to time to check out, Kevin's not- like, "Okay, you go pay for yours, and I'm gonna go pay." for No, me. I didn't whisper like it was a big secret to the world. You kind of like, did. No. You're you, so dramatic. You kind of did. And I'm oh. like, well, it comes out of the same account. You are so Susan Lucci right now. I'm not You're, Susan Lucci. You are. You need a Snickers. I could go for a Snickers. Okay. All right. That's it. So, yes, MCAL starts next week. We're participating. I will at some point. So I'm casting talk- on, on October 8th when it is when it comes. And I'm staring at my bag full of yarn right now. All right. I'm so excited. I have to kick it all up. Well, let's talk about some knitting. Shall we? Let's do yeah. it. Do you have any? I have no FOs and I have one whip. So I'm super excited today. I'll carry us today. Okay. I have two whips. Um, nope. Yes. I have two whips and I have two FOs. Okay. Do you want to see my first one? Yeah. So it has been a long time coming. I I am extremely proud of this knit and I am I couldn't be happier. I finished about three months late for um, 
Knits. Happy Knits uh, Knit Along Cardigan Knit Along. Um, I Knit the Ranger by Jared Flood. And for all of you people who have been here for a while, you know that it, this has been like <laughs> five months in the making or something. Um, it's a beautiful textured cardigan. I'll stand up so that you can all see it. I'm I'll move to the it. side. I'm wearing it now. So this is this is it. This is the Ranger by Jared Flood. It is a like I said, it's a textured cardigan. Um, the the pattern definitely took. It, it's not one of those that you can really go on autopilot with. Um, but I'm, I'm very, very happy. It's my first time ever knitting a cardigan. It's a bottom up cardigan. I used, um, Trilogy yarns, uh, hundred percent non-superwash merino wool. It was a one of a kind colorway. Uh, it's a beautiful, like green with, you know, browns and there's some black specks, I think in here. Any browns? No, no browns. No browns. No browns. Um, I ha I think she sent me eight skeins total. I have to go back and, and look. Um, and I have uh, 107 grams left. So I took about seven skeins of yarn. I did the 42-inch chest, I believe, was my size. Uh... 42 and three quarter inch um, chest. I was a uh, little bit nervous because a lot of the pictures that I've seen and some of the projects that I've seen on Ravelry, it looks like the sweater when it's buttoned is a little bit, a um, little bit tight, tighter and like form fitted. I wanted a nice like cozy, comfortable cardigan, and this is exactly what I was looking for. I did not alternate the skeins, so you can see that there's pooling, and you can see where the you know where I use the different skeins of yarn. But I really like that look with this yarn. Um, how do you do a a bunch of different techniques that I had never done before? Um, some short row techniques. There was I've never done a button band, and you know I've never knit like buttonholes before. They do work. Everything is like works nice. Um, it does when it's buttoned. It's not, it's nice and, and loose. This yarn was fantastic to, um, was fantastic to work with. Now, did right? you, like it doesn't look like it's like pulling much. No, it's good. Did they tell you where to place the buttons or did you have to figure that no, out? No, he said to do it, um, sorry. He said to do it like evenly. So I actually looked, like I looked at the, um, the pattern yeah and i counted how many how many um oh smart yeah because it's a two by two rib yep so i uh i kind of matched it up there so i did two um you know knit bumps or whatever and put it here and then after that was every five and then at the bottom i just put two extra buttons down the bottom there in case I well, no, to, like, no there are two buttons here has, yeah so yes. it's seven buttons total um the the underarms was a Kitchener stitch, which I thought was great. So you didn't, I didn't have to worry about like giant holes under the underarms. The only thing is, and it's not a bad thing because I'm I'm super happy with how it turned out because all of my fears totally went away with it be feeling like it was too constricting and tight. Is this yarn? Uh, honestly, this yarn is magical. It like you can even see how drapey. It is now. The only thing is the collar, and I'm. It's probably user error. I probably didn't do the collar correctly, um, but it like it kind of drapes open. It's probably the yarn, which it's, I re and I think it's the yarn because it's super drapey and and um, well, cozy. It's a super wash, and that's knit it's non super wash. It's non super wash, hundred oh, okay. percent non super wash. Whoa, did I say that? I don't remember. It's non super wash. It's non super wash. But I think. This collar, like this yarn is probably like a... It's their shelter. I'm sure it's a shelter. Yeah. So it's it's a lot um, stiffer. Right. Because it's not... But a merino, I, you, you have a super a non-super wash yeah. merino, which is just naturally yeah. softer. So it's um it's so cozy. I am, I'm really happy with it. The 
I when I blocked it, I wet blocked it, and I laid it out, and I actually spent time, which makes a lot of sense, and I don't know why I've never done it with the other two sweaters before, is I spent time with the uh, measuring tape and actually blocked it out to the measurements that it wanted. I looked at the schematic and stuff. So it, it just, it really, it does. It fits, it fits beautifully. I'm so, so happy with this. Is that going to be your house coat? This is going to be my house coat. Are you going to wear that instead of your bathrobe? So um, it doesn't have pockets. I could always add pockets probably. I do like a good pocket in my bathrobe so I can put my phone, put my hands. Yeah. So um, I will not wear this again until Rhinebeck. I will be wearing this at Rhinebeck. So if you um, want to know what I look like. Well, I don't know maybe. if we have to wear masks or whatever. Well, Rhinebeck, it's, we just checked. It's supposed to be, at least here, almost 70. Yeah, so, so that's going to be kind of warm for a yeah. worse than weight sweater. You'll have it. And if it's temperature Maybe I'll permitting. just like tie it on it like as a flag and walk around with it. I don't know. I'm, I I love it very much. It's actually not as... Um, it's It feels still feels like breathable and warm at the same time. I feel very comfortable right now. Good job. So, that's it. That's my... That's one FO. Okay. Um, Let's move on to your next. The buttons... Oh, your buttons. I mean, not. I don't know. I've never done a sweater before like this with the buttons and stuff. I brought up the package of buttons that I I did, and got. I saw it. Me too. I'll find it probably. Oh, here they are. Uh, we went to um, Joanne's to get buttons. We had we went to the Christmas tree shop last week. Oh, we got some new fall decor from the Christmas tree shop. Just, did we get one or two things? We went for coffee because we've talked about this before. The coffee at the Christmas tree shop. The Victor coffee Allen. pods, Victor Allen. Yeah. Very affordable. So we got the pumpkin coffee. spice and then our regular like light bl- medium mm. roast and a dark roast blend. So um, we were at Joanne's and I just got... So buttons are expensive. They are. Like they're super expensive. I mean, they're... Not super expensive. They're not but super expensive. If you went to... These are the ones that I used. A Like a yarn store to get it, you'd pay more money than you did at Joanne's. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about it. I, I, I can't tell you. What size needles is it on? Uh, six, sevens, and eights. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is what the pattern called for. I knit oh, and exactly. It's... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and it's knit in the round. It's not pieced. It's not pieced. It, I'm, it, it's knit flat. It's knit flat, back not, and forth. Not pieced. So yeah. the only piecing you did was your sleeves were the only things Correct. knit separately. You knit the sleeves first. Um... And then you end up uh, picking them up when you like when you do the yoke shaping. You start picking up the sleeves. Um, so I think that'd be here. a good pattern for somebody who would like to knit a cardigan who's never knit one that is afraid of piecing. Yeah, the and seaming. The only thing is, I don't know if I'm such a fan of bottom up because my anxiety starts taking over. I'm like, what if this isn't gonna fit me? What if this isn't gonna fit me? Like I had to wait until I was up. You know, here before right. I can really try on the sweater to see if everything was okay. But what wouldn't fit the length? At that point, you're really just concerned about the or length. Or maybe even the width, too. Like, I know you can block yeah. it out, but I wasn't sure how this yarn would... Um, this is my first time using this yarn from Nancy. That's probably why swatching helps. I did swatch, right, and I got, gauge, I got gauge both ways. So if you trust your swatch and you trust your knitting, you should be okay. Yeah. But you're right. I I don't. I I'm afraid of piecing. I'm watching you knit your sweater, and I'm like, what? This no. Yeah. Nope. So anyway, my next sweater will be a top down colorwork sweater. Okay. Speaking of colorwork, I have another um, Ooh, fo. Excuse me. That I just whipped up. Um. This is uh, living in our fancy boy designs. So cute bag, isn't that so cute? This is my good side. It says Drogu. Is that his name, Drogu? Yes. So I've been sitting on this for a while. I bought this yarn specifically for this pattern, and I actually used the the uh, planned yarn for this pattern. I don't have a printed version. I'll have to pull it up. My intention was to do this the adult size, but I did not. Um, let me show the yarn first, because I, th- I think the hat would be really, really cute to show. This is using um, Arbor. Um, so I have, I think this is called Kettle. This is Kettle. Arbor is a DK weight um, Brooklyn, tw- uh, Brooklyn Tweed. Yeah, Brooklyn Tweed, 100% American Tarji wool, 145 yards. 
So that is kettle. This one here, it's gonna, it looks a little bit, it's, it's like a, it's got like a, it's got some gray in it. Yeah. It's called thaw, which makes sense. Yeah. Like a, like thawed snow or something. It's a like white, that. but with a gray undertone mm -hmm. to it. So that's thaw there. It looks like what almost. What? Because it's backwards on our screen. And then this last one is called, I think it's like honey something. Crumb. I was wrong. Crumb. Isn't that a beautiful color? Mm -hmm. So this is what I, this was my color palette. And I knit this guy. It's cute. Isn't he cute? Yeah. This is the Unbearable Hat by Maxim Sear, Max the Knitter on Instagram. He, um, it's, it's, uh, sizes for adults to kids. I knit this for my niece, but now that I'm looking at it, it might be a little bit, um, she Small. likes pinks and stuff. I don't know. It's, it definitely stretches. You could do that for Dom. I was thinking for Dominic. So, but the only thing is this yarn is, um, non-superwash and for a kid and then looking at it too. The floats, I'll show you um, my floats, but I did um, I did exactly the pattern for this number two size, the second size in. So it's got a really cool uh, folded brim that you you knit the brim, you fold it up, and then you know you pick up those stitches and or knit them together. Is it with a provisional cast on, or is it just picking up the stitches? Like, do you have no? Your, I uh, did is a it on waist I did no? a stretchy. Okay. Cast no, on. What's it called? Um, German twisted cast German on. German twisted cast on. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to see, because a lot of people with folded brims, the reason that some people don't like doing them yeah. is a good majority of them, from what I've seen, have you put your stitches on, a provisional cast on. Oh. So your stitches are on waist yarn. Gotcha. Um, so some people don't like doing that. So this is, if it doesn't have that, that's um, a nice way to do that. I'm just pulling up the pattern so that you all can see. I um I chose my colors basically like what the you know cl as close as I could get to this because I love these colors together, so I did a pretty good job choosing the colors. Yeah, what yarn does he they kind of match? His? Um, it's a I don't know, but I'd like to try it because it looks like the stitch definition is really nice on there. West Wool Tandem. So from Stephen West. From Mister Mister West himself. Okay. What? So that's the unbearable hat, Le Garçon. Um, oh, maybe it was both Max and Vincent that put this together. But it's cute because look at it, it goes with. He's got a sweater as well. Yeah. Um, a hoodie. Yeah, the unbearable hoodie. And then you know how cute is this whole look? There is an option to do um, to do bear ears instead of the pom pom. Oh, that's cute. Right. So, like, this is kind of what I was thinking for Reese. Maybe do, like, the pink. But you would definitely need... I even think giving that but to I, Dom would... I No, yeah. That so, makes sense. You know what I might do? I actually might... Um, I might I might give this to um, Knit New Haven as a sample, if they would want it, for the Brooklyn Tweed. Oh, maybe. Because that's where I got the yarn from. The pom-pom, I used the Clover pom-pom maker, and I just kind of wanted to include all the three colors. Um I did not, so I'll show you my floats if you're interested. These do have some really long floats, so you do have to catch your floats um, in the color work. The, don't, I didn't know what I was going to do yet with the pom-pom, um, so that part is just kind of on hold. But you can see, like, you have to, you do have to catch your floats quite a bit because there, there are some, some pretty long, some pretty long ones. And then this one. I don't know if you can see. I forgot to catch my float here, so that's like super long. When I do the color work, I do it two-handed color, the stranded color work two-handed. So um, I hold my my background color in my right hand and my dominant color, the one that I really want to pop. So the black, because I wanted the bear to be more defined, I held that in my left, my left hand and I did that continental style. And then the background color was the white at, or the grayish at that point. Um, that was in my right hand, and I knit that um, English style. And then the gold, then you did continental. So style. then I did, yep, so then I did the gold um, continental. Yep, and then once you get up here, obviously, I just, you know, you break I hold it. them both in my 
left. Yeah, a lot. No, you can do in my right hand. You can do both. You know, both ways. I just I don't know. I found it easier to do with um with both. And then once you get into a flow, it's like oh this is cool. You know, you feel like you're whatever. So, but that's that. That's cute unbearable. App. Isn't it cute? I think it's so cute. My intention was to make an adult size, an adult version. Um, have this for me. And I kind of wish that I did now. But now that I got the pattern down, I think what I can probably do, um, because it calls for DK weight yarn, I might hold, I might be able to hold two fingering you could. together. We've got a bunch of stroll, um, too. What colors? Would different you do colors. That? I think for Reese, I would do the black still. Black, oh, white, I see and for pink, Reese. maybe. Um, yeah. And then for Dominic, I was thinking of doing like polar bears. So maybe doing like white and then like black and then like a, a different contrasty color, maybe like a yellow or something like that or a blue. Maybe blue. Yeah. So you could do. So their birthdays are coming up in December. I thought it would be yeah. cute. You know, I thought it would be very cute to have for them. And then for Dominic, I was thinking about doing the ears and Reese doing the pom pom. Or, or uh, I would I'm do sorry, ears, no, I'm sorry, ears, ears for, for Reese, Reese and pom pom for uh, for Dominic. So I might give this to Nit New Haven. You I may. Don't know. Do you then, think they do they take samples? Like, I, can you just give it to him? I don't know. You're don't also know. probably then gonna have to knit one for Emma. Oh, that would be cute. Do you think Patrick wouldn't wear one? I don't. I think Patrick's a little. I think he's a little too old for that one. I would I wear th- it. I think I want to for Patrick. Look how cute! Oh my god, I could totally pull this off. I tried putting this on my own head. Oh, it didn't work. Yeah, don't, don't. Yeah. So anyway, those are these are my two FOs. Good job. Yeah. I'm very proud of this guy. He's so cute. Um, what else can I tell you? And I use the recommended needle size for the pattern, which I think was a US 4. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. And I told you I knit the size 2. Oh, US 6. US 4 and then a US 6. So they're larger needles for... No, that's about average for DK. Six? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah, probably. Okay. That's it. All right. See you guys later. All right. And I have one whip. So, guys, picture it. Sicily, 1964, <laughs> I cast on this sweater. <laughs> this is living in my naughty knitting sack. Your prickle pants? She had a shop update last night. I almost she bought did? a bag. I didn't. I feel so out of the loop. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the Merman one. Merman? Yeah. She'll have a Merman one? Yeah. Really? Like a sexy Merman one. (gasps) Katie. So I'm still working on my I I I know it's not pronounced Ivan, but I call it Ivan. It's I V O N. How would you say that? Ivan. Ivan. Ivan? Ivan. So here we go. Are you guys ready? So this is what I did. I finished. So I've now finished my right panel. So this panel's done. I really love this yarn, Kev, this honestly. This is a worsted weight piece together cardigan by Veronique Avery for Brooklyn Tweed. I'm using Knit Picks Simply Wool Worsted in Wadsworth and Heather. This is a non-super wash wool. And when I have um, did my swatch, it softens up beautifully. This section here is actually going to... So this whole section folds in and gets tacked down behind it once it's pieced together. So this is actually my neck piece. Actually, this goes behind my neck up there and gets seamed with the other side. So I finished this since our last episode. Mm -hmm. And then I, so now all I have are my sleeves and my sleeves are probably like three quarter length sleeves, if not a little bit shorter. And it is a tulip sleeve. So I'm on sleeve one. So here's what I have so far. Wow. So here's boldest sleeve. So the sleeve starts knitting flat you do a tubular cast on do some short row shaping and then that's where the trouble began y'all once i got my short row shaping done and i had um it's german short rows and i picked up all my stitches close your gaps well no gaps just like you know 
closed my short rows, whatever, oh, yeah, the stitches. Mm-hmm. So what the pattern has you do is take, so you're, I had it on circular needles. The pattern asked to take the backs, um, a certain number of stitches off the back needle or the needle without your working yarn attached. And then the pattern just said, move it behind the needle, set up to work in the round, and knit those stitches together from your front and back needle, keeping in mind that my front needle was always going to be the circular needle. I tried this for three days. I looked at it too. I felt I, so bad for you. I think I got to that point on Sunday. So I tried for three days. I even sent a message in our um, to our virtual knit night group um, to see and ever and like they were helpful and I knew exactly how it was supposed to look, but based on the description and the pattern, I couldn't see it and I couldn't get it to work. Mm-hmm. So on Wednesday night, I actually emailed Brooklyn Tweed through their website. They have a pattern support. I got an email like almost immediately that it was like um, after hours and that I would be contacted by their customer service rep. I think it's Mary is what they said. And then Thursday, I got the email with a drawing of how to do it in a little more of a description. And I did it. And I what did great it, customer service. I is. did it wrong again, though. Yeah. So then finally, I went one more time and I got it. So this is where... I'm at now. And what's kind of interesting, so I'm waiting to see how this is, is I'm like, I'm doing a different type, some type of shaping I'm or shifting. So my round started here at the bottom, but now my round, as you can see, has shifted a good, probably seven stitches. So I'll be interested to see what this looks like once it's done. It's going to be like, this is interesting. Yeah, there's one, the one thing I'm not sure that I like is that this edge, wait, you can't see that. This edge here is not finished well. Throw a line or crochet on it. So, I mean, nobody should see it. If you're looking at my elbow, we have a different conversation that we need to have. Um, But this pattern is knit on US four, fives, and sixes for me. I went down needle sizes for it. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm hoping to have it done by Rhinebeck. I don't know that I will because I have to do this sleeve, a second sleeve, then I need to block it, and then I need to seam it together. So we'll see. And this is all that I've knit on. So I finished the one panel, and then I'm more than halfway done with this now. But there were a good, like, probably five days that I haven't knit over the last couple of weeks i know it's that's that's so frustrating well no when you and, get to that point and yeah you can't. that was super frustrating when you i couldn't um like i knew how it was supposed to look kind of yeah and the only way i knew that is that i i had a look at an image i'll actually show you guys let me pull it up all right so this again is a sweater I'm like looking like I've never seen it before. Right. And here's like, it kind of shows you, but you can't really see because the yarn's dark. So you can't see the sleeve all that well. And then going through the pattern, the next time, here it is again, just in the schematics. Doesn't tell you much. Then the neck the only picture i saw that showed any of the sleeve detail to get an idea was here there so i had to look at that to figure out how it was supposed yeah, like to supposed kind of to look look yeah and i was working from that image to try to determine what i was supposed to do um once i got it it completely made sense and i'm like oh now I know, but the I will say the pattern could be a little bit clearer when you're moving your DPN to the back of the needle, mm-hmm. which needle you're moving it to the back of. Right. 
because I is not the one that if I have a needle on my left and a needle on my right and I'm taking the yarn from my left, I was thinking that it had to go behind this needle, but it actually had to go behind this one. It had to come around and come behind this, which took me a long time to figure that out. But at least you did. And with the help of uh, Brooklyn. Yeah, it was super like super quick customer service. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Really helpful. I actually have to email her back and just let her know. Was it really Mary? Yeah, it was Mary. I think there's, I don't know. Who is Mary? Hi, Mary. Are you watching? I'm just kidding. Great. So that's it. That's all I have knitting wise. So you may proceed and carry the rest of the episode because you have two whips. I have two whips. First one, we'll talk about this one. This is, I cast this on like late last night. Um, I needed a break from my paper. Kevin was playing video games. Tarquin was like chill last night, which was nice. Um, The gents over at Fiber Hustle are having a uh, dishcloth revelation. Revolution. 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 It's a week-long knit-along for nothing but dishcloths because... um, Why not? Why not? And Chip loves dishcloths. Yeah. So if you have any extra dishcloths you want to send to them... Don't do that. Reach out to me. I'll give you their address. I'm just kidding. Um, so I started a dishcloth, and that's all I have. It's a it's Dishy Twist. Um, this was downstairs sitting on my Razcog. I think I originally tried to, like... The reason why it was down there is because I remember I wanted to, like, crochet some um, beer koozies. Well, you also wanted to have a dishcloth kind of on your needles at all times, too. So you decided to have cotton down there. Yeah. And I think that was back in 1999. Yeah, that worked out well. Yeah. So um, this is Dishy Twist in the Mulberry colorway. This is one of my... this. There's different Dishy Twists. I like it. It's cool. This one is my favorite. It's super soft. Um, This is called... Dishy Twist. Oh. There's a Dishy yeah. Twist Multi or something. No, like that that's well. my favorite one to knit with. It's actually. all behind you over there. Yeah, I haven't knit with a solid one yet, though. No? This is. Oh, Dishy Multi. Yeah. I like the Dishy Twist for some reason better than even the Multi. Mm. I feel. Um, Does it I feel don't like know. plusher? It, no, just feel Softer. it. You can even tell a difference. Oh, yeah. Right? There's just something a little bit different about this. So this is probably my favorite yarn yeah. from Knit Picks to Knit Dish Claws yeah. with is the twist. So I am using, and I don't know the name of the pattern. This is by um, Stacy Perry from Very Pink Knits. It's a free pattern, uh, her dishcloth patterns, like traditional dishcloth. Um, it, this one has the holes in it because you're doing some like yarn overs as your increases. I've never done the ones with the holes. We've always done them without, so you're like knitting front back and then you know knitting the rest of the row but uh but yeah it's i mean it's a dishcloth it's uh dishcloth revelation revolution they also have some hashtags i think that's the hashtag on instagram or it's like hustle your hustle your clean something hustle clean your hustle clean your hustle (laughs) clean your hustle hole so that's one um my second one, uh, these are socks that are still on the needles. I talked about these a few times as well. Because I've been working on larger this large project, and then I went right to the hat afterwards. Um, I did knit a few rows. That's the pattern from Stacy. Oh, thank you. So traditional dishcloths, square and rectangular, and it has it for with or without holes in it. And it also has like these elongated ones these little rectangular ones yeah. which i tried and i don't remember why i took it out i never finished mine for that so i'm knitting these in tandem um with uh with two nine inch circular needles kevin nine inch circular needles i like 10 inch circular needles better i we had this conversation last time some of you enjoyed talking about the firmness of the wood and others i'm gonna tangent real quick because it just reminded me about last time you saying last i time. love this sweater can i just say that one more time please do so okay i love this sweater. um i had we had some questions about where i was looking for color palettes like what app oh, i was yeah. using and yeah. i don't use an app i right. just 
Google color inspiration and then I go to images and that's what I use a lot for um, like ideas for dyeing and ideas for color combos. So I don't use an app and I know that there is one that Sarah uses from Sarah. Yarn Hellions. Oh. And I had looked at it, but I was cheap and I didn't want to buy it. And it was only like two ninety nine. Uh, but yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't know how often I would use it, so I didn't want to um, buy it. I forget the name of it. You though. also don't want to use ATM machines from other banks because you don't want to pay money. Absolutely to take out money. not. No, I Here's know. Here's the thing. If you or can... you don't want to have um, groceries nope. delivered to the house or nope. any of that stuff. Nope. I don't want to use Grubhub, Uber Eats. Piccadilly, whatever you What's deliver. Piccadilly? I don't know. Maybe it's a Zomato. Oh, um, my watch is telling me to stand up. Didn't what, you I, stand up? Yeah. I don't like paying delivery fees. I know. It's bad enough that when we use the pizza delivery app, I pay a delivery fee on there. We might use that tonight. No. no. Am I going to get Chinese no. food? What do you want? I don't know. Let's continue with your whip. Okay. So I, I threw away the box. This is the unique sock um, kit thing it comes with two 50 gram self-striping um yarn it's 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon and i like i said i am doing these in tandem but i kind of do like um so this is my I, I think i showed you this last time this is my second sock i um i knit the heel i'm doing these toe up i started with a german uh nope Turkish. A Turkish cast on and um, got up to, I cast on 14 stitches. Then I increased to my 72 stitches. I'm using uh, US 2, no, US 2, uh, 2.25 millimeter needles. I can't remember. I couldn't remember the, the size of my, um, my needles. Um, I knit... So I wear a size 12 foot. So for me, I knit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Whoa. No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 80 rows of um, knitting for my foot. And then I did a uh, fish lips kiss heel. And then I'm just going to knit to finish off um the ball of yarn so this is where i was on that that second sock um this one this is getting like so fun now look at how the colors are changing i have um i still have a good amount of yarn left over too so did you I, weigh it recently i feel like you did not recently no no but i weighed them both afterwards and i had the same amount of um of yarn so um yeah so here's where the heel is everything is matchy matchy up to that point does it tell you where to cast on? Like, does it give you, you know how like Regia no. has the yellow? So mm -hmm. you just have to like, yeah, I just, I just, guess it. yeah, I just cast on the same amount of yarn, but I think this is so, this is going to be so much fun. The self striping plus like a little fade going into it here. Yeah. So, um, we'll see, we'll see how much, you know, how much longer I go. These are, it's nice for when Tarquin's like laying on my lap or we're watching TV that we have to pay attention to. So that's all. That's all I got. I'm not. Right. I don't, I'm not in a rush to have these finished or anything. That's it. That's all of our knitting. It's been a lacklust. Not lacklust. No, we have we have had great things to show. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, you know, I just didn't knit. Typically, I have more. We don't projects. have thirteen thousand projects on right, the needles. I know. You guys see this thing? It's so nice. So. So, buttons. Now we talk about our... Let's do this. Um, our post and some acquisitions or break in the bank. Yep. So if you're not interested in... We don't have much in no, the way don't. of showing all this. So if you're not interested, it's okay. Love you. Bye. I know. This is going to be a light episode for us. It's much. It's going to be a much shorter th than normal. So first, I'm going to start with coupon codes. Um, we have... Naughty Knitting Sacks. We do. Which is on Etsy. That oh my code gosh, is I just looked at her. Prickle sorry. Pants 15 for 15% 15 off your order. Then Trilogy Yarns at TrilogyYarn.com. And that code is NATR15 for 15% 15 off anything excluding clubs. 
We have Knit Swag, which is knitswag.com. Code is Kevin and Ray for 15% off your order. Then we have Ozone Mama Yarn on Etsy. Mm. That's Amber. The we just code, saw Amber. Yeah, we saw Amber last weekend. Hi, Amber. And we'll see Amber probably two weeks at Rhinebeck. Mm-hmm. And that code is Strat City. So that's S T R A T City 15 for 15% off your order. Then Miss Lila Styles, which is Love N A T R 10 for 10% off your order. And I believe this one's still good. There's a couple we have to reach out to see if they are still good. Always Queenie Believe on oh, Etsy, yeah. which is 9 inch Cirque for 20% off. Mace of Skeins. Oh, gosh. Needles at the Ready for 15% off. And that is good until October 31st. That excludes her at... No, the... I think it excludes her Advent and that um, her special box. boxes. Mm-hmm. And then we have... I believe this one's still good. Doodle, Doodle Bug Yarn mm-hmm. Shop, which is N-A-T-R Yarny Friends 20 for 20% off your order. And then we have one new one. We which do. is going to tie right into our post. So we received a very generous package in the so mail. So generous. Awesome bags. Yeah. Here, you want to show. Here, I'll show the, these two? two. So we are going to probably so. keep two and then we'll add two to our prize um, bin. This is from Creations Mad Hook and Needle on Etsy. We'll have this link down below. We have a coupon code um, for 10% off. It's mad for you. The word for F O R. We'll have that shown down below. Wait, hold on. Is that coupon? Yeah, right? Yeah. I would say, or is that coupon code? Can I see the card? Because the card says this. Does it go with that? Dawn of the Dead. Day of the Dead. Do you of think the it dead? just goes with this bag? I'm not sure. There wasn't a note. To explain what we we're supposed to do. Okay. We'll get. I don't know. All right. Try Coupon, it. Try it. We'll have to reach out. I didn't even think about. It. I didn't see that before. So let's look at the some bags. Let's do All it. Right. So here's our first one. So this one, obviously, we'll be keeping. <laughs> Harry Potter stained glass. Right. This is a good size. This is a good sock bag. Oh, for sure. Right? Zipper, oh. little handle here, handle here. Um, I love the um, stitch, stitch markers. markers. They're little... Um, here, let's see if I can... Skull. Cute. Very cute. Like Day of the Dead stuff. Yeah. Very nice. And then this other one. Is well, look- this kind of goes in the same okay. theme. That will, this will, yeah, you show that one. This will be the other one that so, we're keeping. So, check. This check is our- out the size of that one. Whoa! Look but at the wait, back. there's more. How cute! It's got a little pocket here. Yep. There's your tag. This also has the skull and little bead. There. The inside is. I mean, like, it's a huge. It's we're definitely gonna, a so we'll put that's Tarquin a in bag. here when we go to um, Rhinebeck, and we'll just carry Tarquin around. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can dogs go to Rhinebeck? We were talking about this. We're not bringing him this year, so no, we're not bringing him. Okay, so that's that. It's humongoid. And then this set will go into our prize bin. I think this is such an amazing. Oh fabric. my god, we'll have to do a really big. Um, what we'll do is we'll save, probably save this for next year. We'll do like a Halloween one. Oh. So it comes with this bag, has a pocket, then you have handles. I love the pink. Then you have a zipper, which is fluorescent pink. It's like pink. badass. Then you have the interior, which is flames. Then you also have a pocket right here on the inside. And again, it's a good like... Yeah, box bottom. Box bottom sweater size bag and it also has a nice little like notions pouch the fabric is gorgeous and this gorgeous is a red zipper yeah and the inside is the same fabric as the outside oh i love it which is actually really smart totally 
Well, that's seeming. Here, let's throw a, um, one of her cards in there if we're going to do that one. Yeah, that giveaway. one's going to... So that will go in the giveaway bin. Oh, this one also came too. Yeah, that one's going in the giveaway bin. That oh. one, I really like that fabric I too. like this one too. I don't want to give it away. Oh, well. This would be a really nice... I know it's like a... All right. This is another nice like hat, small project bag, or you can use this as a, a large notions bag. This has a... Oh, is that a popsicle? Where? What is that? Stitch marker. I don't know. I don't know either. I love it though. What is that? Ice? Oh, it's really pretty. Um, this has a pocket on the outside with the snap. So you have a pocket here. You can also put your needle um, hanging out here if you if you wanted to. So that's why I'm thinking this would be a really nice like notions pouch for all your accoutrement. The inside also has a pocket here. This is a perfect sock bag. I don't want to give this away, but we'll give it away. Love it. Thank you so much. That was so incredibly generous of you. So please go check them out. Creationsmad.etsy.com. So cool. And then... This, we've this been, has been sitting here forever and a day, and we keep forgetting to talk about it. But a friend of the podcast sent us, look, some Thundercat pins. Thunder. Thunder. Thundercats. Thundercats. Oh. So you know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? Because this goes way back to one of my, uh, probably episode four or five of this podcast. Mm-hmm. When I knit the sockhead Chitara sock uh, hat, remember that? Yeah. And I said, "Oh man, I wish I had a Thundercats pin or something to put like on it." Uh -huh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put this on it. I should have brought it. It up. makes me want to watch Thundercats really bad. Me too. too. So you yeah. can catch them on uh, YouTube, I think. The original Thundercats, not the the trash that's been on. I don't know that it's really don't, trash. Don't talk about. Oh my god. So thank you very How much for fun. our pin. I know. I this is going to look great on the hat. My friend, um, so my old coworker Jeff, he has the Thundercat tattoo on his leg. He does. I always wanted to get one. I'm glad I didn't. But a Thundercat tattoo. Mm -hmm. But I do. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm actually looking to get another tattoo. All right, and then so that's everything for owl post, and then no. I, oh yeah, owl post. Yes. Right, and then so thank you so much. Yes, thank you. For our so fun. Nice little I know. things. And then I'm the only one who's made purchases. Yeah. Who doesn't want to spend $2.99 on a stupid app, but yet you'll buy, you know. <laughs> All right, first up. If you haven't received it, look away. This is a this is gorgeous. This is from my uh Discovery of Witches. I thought you were gonna say my Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Nancy from Trilogy Yarns, the Discovery of Witches Club. This is on her dur -dur 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 -dur. Glamour Space, which is 8020, Glamour. my favorite base. So this is my sixth shipment. Yeah. I have I already been doing this for six months? No. Yes. Yes. You yeah. have? Yeah. So this is um absence and desire. So nice like green and brown and yellows and chartreuse. Yeah, chartreuse. No yellow. Mm -hmm. Nope, that's chartreuse. Not yellow. Mm. So this mm, yeah. This would be a good um, hat. I mean, this had to take a while to dye. All the different, like, yeah, things I, she had to do. There's, like, some speckles in there. I don't know how. Literally, I would. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> like, I couldn't do this. Well, if, would we I move need... out, if we move out to Omaha, wherever you, she lives. But you know what I Just always kidding. mean to do, too, is when prior to, like, skeining up a, skein, uh, a hank of yarn is to actually look at it unraveled and just to get an idea of like color placement because that's the one thing that's really hard when dyeing is to really understand how did the you yarn... bring any of your yarn to show i did not so oh, because you have i have some beautiful colors i know what i'm going to do is i'll share um pictures tonight okay on instagram um but i always mean to just kind of like look at it and it also like yeah but it's a beautiful it color. is a beautiful I, color. I think it would be a good hat It'd be really nice in a shawl, too. Yes, it would be a great shawl. It'd be a good one 
Uh-huh. I think it's a good one, Skinshaw. And then my next purchase came. This is um, beautiful. I mentioned it a couple weeks ago. If I'm sure, maybe most, longer than that. Actually. Yeah, I mean, this like was a, a while two, ago, two months ago or something yeah. like that. So most people know um, Hugh Loco and Nicole, the owner of it. Um, one of her good friends had passed away suddenly, and she was doing like a fundraiser for the family. Because um, she left behind her husband and I, like two or three kids. And so she put up a pre-order for um, yarn. You got to choose your base. It was going to be dedicated to her, her friend who had passed away. So this... I and all of the proceeds, proceeds went, to the, went to the family. Everything went to the family. Um, There's a huge turnout for it. And I got this um, earlier in the week. This is called Laurel. Um, Laurel is named after... Is, was her friend... Is her friend's name. So this is on a 7525 superwash merino and it comes with two minis it's gorgeous it is it's beautiful blues and you got this orange and purple in here and this like almost mauvey color Mm. and then i mean this orange is one of my favorite Mm. tones this actually is the kind of orange i think i may want for my Stephen west shawl or not vertices um what else do you have in here yeah you just have blue some yellow. The speckles um, are really beautiful. There's on just there. a whole bunch of. This would be a colors. cool um, single shawl. Skein and using the minis, as, even to Stripes. to make it like yeah, to make it bigger or stripe it or whatever. Yeah, I, this is a beautiful totally. um, skein. And then the last thing I have, I haven't opened it yet because it's a uh, advent so this is uh halloween advent halloween advent so this is i got the um nancy's practical magic halloween advent and it comes with a bag from joanna as stitching the high oh, note no. so i haven't even opened the bag so what i'm thinking guys is i think i'm going to open this the last I guess it would be 15 days of the month because there's 13 skeins, 13 minis, a full skein, and then the bag. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know if I'm going to follow that. What's this? Oh, my receipt. Um, so they come wrapped like this with the number on it. All different colors. and Yeah. Got some candy. Is that a warhead? Yeah, extreme sour warhead. Ooh. Blue raspberry. Yikes. Some tea in it. Um, look at how fun this is gonna be so much fun Kevin you're gonna have to let me open it hi bud some of them hi handsome right on time yeah and that's all we have for break in the bank and wow this is gonna be our shortest episode ever no I don't think so alright so let's talk about what we've been reading and watching alright alright so watching we have so we're back on lucifer we're we are. almost done with season three which is the longest season right we checked the other day season three is 26 episodes every other season has is between like 10 and 16 i think yes so this is a very long season so we're almost done with that we actually stopped like mid episode the other night then, did, oh, because of the dog was a little yeah. bit uh, and then meaty. We started watching a new show on Apple TV Plus called Foundation. It is oh, based great. on a book yes. series, which neither one of us read. Um, apparently, it's not very similar to the book series. Oh, no? It's, it has a, goes this way from the book series. Um, there's The third episode is out. It came out last night. So the first two episodes I thought were really good. The... I mean the just the world building is gorgeous. Like it is, I, and I like the um, yeah the not culture, but like the yeah I guess it would be culture that they they built there too, like with the cloning and all that stuff. Well, that's kind of weird. Well, it's, it's it is weird, it but it's place in the, it's different. We don't even know if it takes place. I mean, on it doesn't. No, it's Earth, sci-fi. I don't think, is part of... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. A, I would say no. a totally different universe, kind of like a Star mm-hmm. Wars thing, mm-hmm. but way more advanced than Star Wars yeah. was. We could be completely wrong. Yeah, I have no idea. But it takes place... Um, it's sci-fi. The cloning, 
Oh, well, I don't want to give that away either. Huh. We travel to multiple planets um, in it. And I I want to go back and watch the first, like, five minutes of the first episode. In it, it starts off and it says, like, it began with a, a murderer, a mathematician, a something, and then a person's name. And I can't remember what that something was. Right. I feel like there were at least three different things. And right. we thought maybe it was a martyr, but I don't know. It would kind of make sense. Martyr, mathematician, murderer. But I don't recall. So I'm going to watch that again. Just so I could figure it out. Because now we know who two of those people are. Um, so yeah, so we've watched that. We've been back, you know, our good mythical morning. We've been just... That's just on all the time. Pretty yep, much. and our Tri Channel. Tri Channel. We love Tri Channel. And I'm still watching Teen Wolf. Mm-hmm. Oh, we watched Top Gun. You had we never did. seen nope. Top Gun. I was waiting for you to say that. Ray has never, up until last weekend, had never seen Top Gun. Not all the way through. I've caught bits and pieces of it. Never. No. Seen it all the way through. Mm-hmm. And I just got the goosebumps again because goose. <gasps> I almost cried. Like, I almost cried. I could have cried. I could have absolutely cried. I did I, not see that coming. I could have cried. It was, it's just such a classic mm-hmm. good movie. And the music. The music's fantastic. It gets you. It gets you down, gets you down and down deep. It gets you. And, I mean, you know what it does make me want to watch every time I watch it? Though? I thought it was going to make you want to, like, fly a jet plane. No, I absolutely no, don't want to do that. Not at all. Um, it makes me want to watch um, the movie Great Balls of Fire. I have no idea Which what that is. is based on a real the guy who sang it. His life. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I watched it when I was probably like early teens, and I haven't seen it since. And I would like to watch it just because I think of that movie every time I hear that song. Okay. Um. What else have we watched? I don't think that much of anything actually, other than mm. that. Um. Yeah, I don't think so. Obviously, we, our podcast, like, we, we always have, you know, we're always watching podcasts. Yeah. Almost every day we watch I at know. least one. Well, we got to catch up. Like, this week. That's where we get our ideas from. It is. You know, we did. We, You know which one was fun to watch? And there'll be another one about it. So, some of the people that we follow went to the Wool Gathering oh in gosh. Ohio. So, we watched... Aquila at a lefty knitter. Yep. Then we watched. Andrea. I would love to have met them. I know. Like I had, I had FOMO really bad. I did not. Have, I totally did. I, did. I wanted to meet. All you know of what them. though? I don't generally get FOMO. Yeah. I don't. I don't get FOMO. Um, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I wasn't. No, you get FOMO. I'm still not good. You get FOMO for most things. Mm-hmm. But so we watched Aquila. Um, at a Lefty Knitter podcast. Then we watched Andrea from the Cat Lady podcast. Mm-hmm. And now Chevis from Chevy Real, Real Stuff. Stuff is going to have hers coming out. And they all got to meet each other. And they had pictures and some videos. You don't um, have FOMO for that? They ate good food. They like camped. They no, I like... don't. I don't have. I just don't get FOMO. I don't have it. All right. Well, I do. I have no, it, would it guys. have been nice to have been able to go and see them? Absolutely. Do I FOMO? No. Maybe maybe I don't have FOMO, but I want I wanted to go. I want to meet everybody. I would love to meet We will meet people at Rhinebeck, so I'm very excited about that. Yes. I'm going to be like a fangirl probably with a couple um, of people if I see them. Uh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, You're going to I'm going to embarrass you, I think. Probably we're not even <laughs> We're not even we'll going to be together. No, we're we'll going to walk around directions. separately. Yeah. <laughs> um so what else? Oh yeah, so that that was kind of what we've mm-hmm. been watching. So I'm I know that Chevis is coming out with her episode soon. She's doing a two parter. She's gonna do her episode, and then her and Dan are going to do a separate one just about the wool gathering. Oh really? Yeah, that's fun. Um, so we did that, and then reading. What have we been reading? I finished one book. Um, I had oh, did I? Yeah, I don't think I had started anything the last I, podcast. I had finished a book. I finished three books. You did? I finished one, yeah. and I'm um, about halfway through with another one. So 
This book, this is called Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Cold. Um, how do I go back to like yeah. the actual picture? It it doesn't allow you to do that. Very it doesn't well here now. So this is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I can't really pronounce the author's name. It's to um, Tojikazu Kawagu. Um, <laughs> no, it does not. Where do you? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Kindle. Tasha. Tasha Kazu Kawaguchi. That person right there. Okay. Um. So it was it takes place in tokyo the story is really neat um basically this co- there's a coffee shop uh at like a basement level you know how like in the larger cities they have stairs like down. stairs that you can go down like shops and different things like that this is a coffee shop down there um it's been there forever and a day and there's something very special about the one was one particular chair in this coffee shop um that if you sit there and you get served um this this like coffee service you get to go back in time and you can go back in time for as long as your coffee stays hot once your coffee gets cold you have to come back to the present um when you go back in time you cannot leave the chair that you're sitting in and you can only interact with people who have been in that coffee shop before so there's a lot of rules um which they make kind of fun of the rules and that's why a lot of people don't want to go back blah 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 blah. very cute story um I'm not going to spoil like the actual like storyline, but that's pretty much the premise. You can also visit the future, though uh, nobody ever does because you you can't like they don't because it's underground. Well, under the streets, they doesn't they don't get cell service, so you can't really like call people. You can't see outside, so you don't hmm. know. You know, so there's no point in going to yeah. the future or whatever. Um, well, you could talk to somebody and ask them a question. Maybe. Who knows? But you have to make sure that they're there. No, know, I'm saying anybody. Coffee shop. Who comes but in. it's a very, um, not a very busy place. <laughs> so people aren't just going to like wander all in. So um, very, very cool story. It's a, a feel good type of story. I was not a fan though um, of the writing style. And I don't know, I don't know if the book was translated from Japanese to um, English. And there might have been some something off with that translation probably it was originally published in japanese yeah so um i'm I'm not you know the description of like the scenes and how people were feeling i felt was very like elementary almost like um i can't really think of a good example but it didn't allow me to like flow like as i'm reading it it was a very short book though i i read it in just a few days but um before the coffee gets cold if you're interested you know it's a cool story, but just I would be prepared to, you know, it's a little staccato when, you, when you're reading it, how the descriptions are. Okay. Yep. Um, and then right now I am reading Discovery of Witches I, again. I, and I knew that and I was just thinking, I was like, what is he reading? Discovery of Witches. This, I'm not doing the real-time read, which somebody actually just, I, and I hadn't commented back yet, but somebody asked what the real-time read was for Discovery of Witches. So it's a trilogy. We talk about this all the time. It's one of our favorite book series and the way that it works is the discovery of witches you can follow the timeline uh and match it up to like the dates yeah which i actually in real life so the book starts you know um and they mention it the book starting in like september 29th or whatever the date is um this is the yeah current that's the real time read so you're supposed to read the chapter on the corresponding day or chapters right so that what you're reading is actually happening uh, happening on like October 2nd right. or whatever. And, um, you know, so you read a chapter or two chapters and then sometimes you skip a night. But it, it makes yeah. you kind of feel like you're participating. And it all ends on Halloween. Yes. And that's where the book ends as well. So I'm not doing that, though, because I, I can read for five minutes and then fall asleep. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not good for me. So I'm just going to I'm just reading it as I read it. Um, it's it, again, it's still one of my all-time favorite books it's such a great story um and that's by shoot deborah harkness duh, duh. deborah harkness yeah all right that's what i'm reading that's what okay I'm 
So I've actually finished four books, three that I read in one audio. Wow. So I finished on Aud- Audible. I finished listening to Wolf Song by TJ Klune. Uh-huh. So that is in the now you've read that before. You just this is your first. Yes, this, you're I, I've to read it. the entire series. That is mm-hmm. in the yeah. Um, I want to say it's like Green Creek or Green River. I always forget what the where they live. Um, does it tell me? So it's a series of books. It's a male male romance shifter, but there's the story's more shifter than anything, I think. Um, so I love the narrator for it. I thought the narrator did a really good job. It was nice to I listened to it strictly when I was at work. Um, so it's very nice. I'm going to start Raven Song, which is the second book, mm-hmm. and then reading wise, I finished. By K.F. Breen, I finished Battle with Fire. So that is book 11 in the Demon Days Vampire Night series, which okay. follows Regan and Darius, Penny, Emery, and Charity. I guess those would be your main characters. So this one was just really wrapping up the series. And there were supposed to be a big battle. But it wasn't like a big battle to me. I feel like the battle part was a letdown. Maybe it was just there to to see how everything that's happened in the past 10 books kind of played into it. Because um, there's magic and premonitions. And so the, the battle itself, there was a lot of uncertainty around it. So I don't know that I was a fan of it. Okay. But then something else was introduced, which could be interesting if she goes and writes about that or uses this Maybe she entity will. in the future. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I do, I love this series together. All 11 books, I thought that they just go really well together. I love Regan. I think she's hysterical. She's such a... She is funny. Potty mouth, bad mamma jamma. Bad mamma jamma. And I do like Kiefer. K.F. Breen as an author. I've read a bunch of her stuff even outside of this. Sure. So I do tend to like her writing style and her character um, development and world building. And I really do. I love Lucifer. Lucifer's in this book, but it's not like, you know, it is the same Lucifer that we would know from like religion and stuff, but still not the same. Um, He's just, he's actually, he's a nice guy. I'm just saying. He sounds like a nice guy. He is. And then I started a new series. I finished the second book in it last night. I'm not sure how I feel about continuing with this series. Oh, really? So it's a book series by L.T. Ryan. It's the Rachel Hatch novels. The first one was called Drift. Rachel Hatch is ex-army, like, And she was, uh, we'll say, almost like a police officer in special ops. Um, So, again, she's another bad mamma jamma. She's like 5'10", smart. She'll kill you in a second, pretty (laughs) much. That's pretty much what's going to happen. She gets a, a family member dies, and it brings her home to her hometown, where she hadn't been in 15 years. So she, like the first book is her trying to solve the, the mystery of like who murdered Mm -hmm. this family member, but also like unraveling this whole thing that's going on in town. Sure. The second book plays on, um, and you find out when she was young, a family member died. They were murdered. Well... She never knew what really happened. And so now she's trying to figure that out. So in the next book, the second book, which I finished reading called Downburst, took us to New Mexico. And it was just kind of far-fetched. Like she went Mm. to go find out, like get more information. But then it was like, oh, I'm going to intervene in this gang violence, biker war town under control by people and i was like okay 
it would have been cooler if you got to this town where you were trying to get information about the right. person who died when you were a kid. And it was something tied to that, but it wasn't. So now we find out she has to go to Africa to get this information. Hmm. So now I'm like, okay, so now we're going to Africa. And it's all military related, though. Like, it's still military. Now we're talking that this person was a mercenary, possibly. So it's like just trying to find out all this stuff. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go on. Like, I, I'd rather be back home in her small town, like do stuff there. Um, and she's kind of stupid sometimes. She does make some really stupid decisions. So I'm not sure where I'm at with that. Um, so that's what I fin. Those were the four books that I finished. That's a lot. Yeah. No wonder why I didn't get a lot of knitting done. No, I didn't. I'm I kidding. no, I think the knitting. Now you got a lot of knitting. <clears throat> we got knitting done. Yeah, I got knitting done. I got a lot of dyeing done too. Yeah, you did. Um, so now I just have to today. I have to take pictures, skein it all up, ball band it, put it up on. I Etsy. think you should just give yourself another week. No, it's fine. It actually it it really doesn't take that. It takes a long time. Not that long. It does. Mm. A ton. I'll get it done. No, I need to do it so I can buy more yarn. I know, but usually more. I get to help you, but I have to finish my paper and we have other things. Yeah. It's nope. Just, uh... We'll have it tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. And I think that's everything. This I is think a short so, too. Episode. This is a short episode. Yeah. But that's okay. You all can go about your business. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and then um, don't forget, if we if you are going to Ryan Beck on the Saturday, mm-hmm. you know, stop by. Sunday's probably going to be a very long episode. Our next our next podcast. Oh, show. I so read. we'll make up for it. So prepare yourself for like a two and a half hour episode. I'm just I know. kidding. No, it, it would it be, be cool a, if we can like show like we can show pictures. We could probably maybe we'll edit that one and throw pictures in from Rhinebeck. No. <laughs> no. We could do it. No, we'll do it like normal and we'll just show it from our phone on sure. the screen. And we'll definitely post on Instagram. <clears throat> so if you don't follow us on Instagram, please follow us on Instagram. Um because then we'll know what we're talking about. I don't let yeah, no, we're good. We'll do it like normal. We're not changing. No. All right. So, yeah. So if you see us at Ryan Beck. Don't you know, change. Yeah. Come wave, say hi. Say hi. Yep. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Yeah. We'll be there. I'm get, I'm assuming we're going to wear masks. Maybe. I don't know what the rules are. I don't know either. Um, all right. Well, everybody, thanks for hanging out with us again. Um, like, subscribe, leave comments. Oh, we haven't done a question of a day for a while. Oh, I knew what it was. You have a lot of energy right now. What is your favorite Halloween movie? Really? Yeah, we're that time of year. It's October. I, I have my Halloween advent calendar. I was thinking of it last night. Okay. Um, Because there's a lot of good movies that are scary or not scary that are mm-hmm. Halloween-ish. Mm-hmm. You, like Teen Witch. I love Teen Witch. Practical Magic. I love that's not a Halloween movie though. Uh, but it has witches. Oh, kind of. And then right? on Halloween they jump off the roof. Yeah. Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus is amazing. The yep. Good Witch is really good. Halloween Town. The Good Witch. Mm-hmm. It was like a. I know what the like Good Witch is. Like a lifetime. It's um. I think it's called the Good Witch. It's ABC Family. There's something movies like and a that. TV show. Yeah. I mean, there's probably about like twelve different movies or whatever. But, but I feel like she would never did magic. Like it was. She just always so, did, but it was. But it you was never just so knew. like. It was so... Um, you had to assume that she was doing it. I know, which annoyed me. Well, I, I couldn't get behind. Oh, you know what does start, though? It also saved money on their budget, probably. Probably. Is Hallmark Countdown of Christmas. What? Yeah. They have new movies out every Saturday night, no. so put your... The 13 Days of Halloween is probably going to be coming up soon. Oh, you can uh, match your, your advent to that. ABC Family? I think it's... A, uh, is it ABC Family? Probably. Or no. Freeform. It's Freeform now. It's not ABC Family. Oh. Anymore. That's gone. Mm. That went kaput. What's other good Halloween movies? I mean, you have all your Freddy Jason movies, right? Yeah, you have your like your scary things for sure. Yeah. Gremlins. That's a Christmas movie. So is Harry Potter. So is Star Wars. <laughs> I know. We have weird... Um... All right. Anyway. Yeah. So favorite... So you tell us what you Favorite like. Halloween movies down okay. below. Sounds all good. All right. So I hope... Everybody has a good two weeks. Yeah. And we will catch you all in a fortnight. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.